Okay, um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, is there any public, uh, public op opportunity to discuss matters of public interest within committee scope, including items on or not on the agenda? I did not have anybody contact me in advance, but or if you could please unmute all of the attendees to see if they'd like to speak. Size, uh, so, uh, attendee, if there's anything you'd like to present to the board at this time, please do so. Okay. Well, we need we need uh three votes for the to approve the consent agenda, don't we? No, we only need two. I do. Oh, we need, okay. Very good. Well, uh, um, the consent agenda. Uh, do we have um a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda? So moved. Oh, I think Walt's muted. Oh, there's Grant. <laughs> I will uh, make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. We have a motion. Um, uh, those in favor, say aye. 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 There you go. Okay, Director Gould, you're on. Okay, thank you. Sorry, guys. I was stuck in the Ethernet. Couldn't get an invite. Got an invite. Got in. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. We, uh, okay. now, we now got we'll it started on. for you. Yeah, we'll now move on to consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion for the action summary minutes. We just did that. Okay, let's move on to action items. Uh, Melissa is going to make, Melissa Mattis is going to make a statement for the recording and for the good of the public. Good evening, directors. Melissa Maddox, HR manager with Metro Fire. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, just to, before we start with these policies, I just want to um, point out a correction on the staff reports. Um, these are not board policies. Uh, they are all administrative policies. So I'm bringing them uh, to you tonight for um, review and comment, but they do not need to be voted on to move on to the, on to the board of directors. Excellent. Thank you very much for that clarification. Appreciate that. And it looks like we're going to have you up uh, in front of us for the remainder of the evening, at least in the policy committee. And let me first thank you all for turning the lectern so that we can see you all as well. Very much appreciate that. So let's start with donated lead, uh, the represented item number one, Ms. Maddox. Okay. Um, good evening. Uh, the donated leave uh, is the previous catastrophic leave policy. Um, there was some discussion about possibly changing the name um, from catastrophic leave so it didn't have such a stigma um, attached, um, specifically when um, female um, employees used it for pregnancy disability leave. Uh, that's really where the conversation started. Um, so we kind of brainstormed and came up with a new name for catastrophic leave, and now we're calling it donated leave. Um, so DL for short, um, kind of just like sick leave would be SL, vacation leave DL. Um, so really the two policies, the donated leave represented and the donated leave unrepresented, the changes to those are the same, um, which include obviously the name change, changing it from catastrophic leave to donated leave. Um, and then also uh, adding language regarding uh, pregnancy disability leave to kind of clarify to employees that yes, this leave can be used for um, the time period where you are disabled by pregnancy. So not necessarily for baby bonding, but while you're disabled by your physician, you can, um, if you're out of accruals and you meet the policy guidelines, you can apply for catastrophic, or I'm sorry, donate the leave. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people had a different, uh, everyone has a different uh, definition of what catastrophic means. Uh, so we just wanted to clarify that, that um, the definition in the policy is catastrophic, meaning anything that's going to incapacitate you, um, meaning you can't do your essential functions of your job, um, that's a disability or even a family member's disability. Um, so that it would also include pregnancy disability. So we added a line in there that said, incapacity to include a period of pregnancy disability as determined by a physician. So those are the main changes of those two policies, the donated leave represented and unrepresented. Excellent. Do you, 
you have any questions on either one of those? Yeah, excellent. Uh oh. Can y'all can you all see me? It looks like we lost. There we go. Any questions for Ms. Maddox on items number one and two? Hearing none, seeing none. Thank you very much for the name change. Uh, I, I, that was a really great idea. Excellent. All right, let's move on now to item number three, sick leave. Okay, um, the sick leave policy um, is our existing sick leave policy. It just has some revisions to it. Um, again, the changes to the donated leave policies kind of prompted additional changes to all the other policies that referred to catastrophic leave needed to be changed to donated leave. So um, again, in the sick leave policy, that's one of the main changes is that we changed anything that referred to catastrophic leave to, do, to donated leave. Um, we also just did some cleanup language in this policy, which um, included uh, including the reference to Oracle. Uh, previously, when we had this policy, we didn't have Oracle yet, so we're adding that um, in there to say telestaff slash Oracle, which is our uh, newly implemented financial system. Um, and then also uh, correcting the definition of domestic partners, which we had done that in a previous policy, and when we were reviewing this one, we noticed that this one hadn't been updated um, for that definition, so we updated that as well. Um, the last thing in here was just correcting uh, the single role shift hours. Uh, they work at a 24 hour shift now and not a 12 hour shift. So we made that adjustment in this policy as well. So uh, mostly just cleanup language in this policy, Nothing, no big changes to the policy itself. So if you Excellent. have questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Excellent, thank you very much, Ms. Maddox. Any questions from members of the board on the sick leave policy changes? Hearing none, saying none, let's move on to the fourth item. Modified duty schedule for non-job related injury, 24 hour personnel, Ms. Maddox. Okay, um, and again, like all the previous ones we've talked about already, the modified duty and the light duty policy are very similar and the changes we made to them were also cleanup language. Um, for instance, changing catastrophic leave to donated leave in both of those, because both of them refer to catastrophic leave. Um, and while we were reviewing both of those uh, policies, we realized that we needed to do some clarification on the um, modified hours while someone's working a modified duty or light duty policy. This, these policies were written before we had um, the SRP um, employees who are hourly employees. So we just added some language in there that referred to salaried employees versus hourly. So salaried employees while they're on light duty uh, suppression employees, they would get their, their uh, monthly salary, uh, whatever, you know, their monthly salary is. But SRP employees, if they work 40 hours, they would get paid for 40 hours because they're hourly employees. Uh, we just wanted to clarify that they would be paid for hours worked and not a monthly mm -hmm. salary. Sure. Okay. So, and that's what we, we do. It's not a change to uh, how we implement that. Mm -hmm. It's how we, we currently um, do uh, modified duty and light duty schedules and the pay associated with them, but we just wanted to make sure it was clear in the policy. Excellent. Uh, and Ms. Maddox, you, you mentioned um, item number five, light duty. Is there more information that you're going to share with us as a separate item so I can ask any questions related to item number four? Yes, the, the changes to those two policies were uh, the same. Okay, very good. So are you comfortable with us doing four and five questions and then we can move on? Absolutely. Okay, any questions, gentlemen, for items number four and five on the agenda for this evening? I have none, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Okay, and Walt? None for me. Okay, so no questions for Ms. Maddox. Ms. Maddox, thank you very much for that clarification and for the uh, statement at the beginning of the meeting. We appreciate that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, it looks to me like we have no other dates planned. Ms. Maddox, if you could just stay there for just a sec. What's your projection, I'm sorry, what's your projection on our workload for the next, say, two or three months, only because we're coming into the holiday season and I, you know, I'd like our, my fellow directors to have some sense if we're gonna have a policy meeting in the months of, say, November or December. What's your thoughts? 
Um, I, I would say it's probably safe to say we won't have any more policies coming your way until the beginning of the year. Okay. That's a crushing blow, as you know. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, so gentlemen, there you go. That's an update on the next meeting to be determined. Any questions for Ms. Maddox before we, uh, uh, we complete this particular session? No, I'll, I, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to uh, thank Ms. Maddox for the great job she always does. Yeah. And uh, that was a good question. I appreciate that uh, regarding the schedule uh, moving forward till the end of the year. Okay, very good. All right, any other questions? All right, let's adjourn the policy committee in preparation for the general meeting. Thank you very much, Ms. Maddox. Thank you. All right. Thank <laughs> you.